I Speak the Truth, Episode 3, Misconceptions by Matthew Walter. Permit me to clarify some misconceptions being propagated by the pawns and operatives of the new Scarret Party before I make public the next thought-provoking episode. 1. Sour Grapes Comrades, I had absolutely no intention to renew my contractual engagement with the government of Dominica. This information was already intimated in advance to the permanent secretary, Reginald Austri, a fraction of the student's body the staff of the Embassy of Dominica in Cuba and some close colleagues in the diplomatic community in Havana. My decision not to request for renewal of contract was based on the following grounds. 1. To return to Dominica with my wife who could not cope with the Cuban environment due to her recent diagnosis. 2. The dismal state of the Cuban economy with an inflation rate exceeding 26%. 3. The poor financial state of the Embassy of Dominica in Cuba which was left on my shoulders to be single-handedly financed when the government failed to provide financial resources on a timely basis over a four-month period. I spent three years under such situation and hence could not bear the burden of responsibilities any longer. My contract was due to retire on May 31, 2023. 2. Loss of Ambassador's Remuneration Before I traveled to Cuba to assume office of ambassador to Cuba, I was financially free, thank God. I achieved such milestone at the age of 59 when I retired from active politics. I ensured that all my debts were fully paid up, thus resulting in my celebration today of such sterling accomplishment. Our current incomes are more than enough to enable us to enjoy a comfortable standard of living. Therefore, my friends, feel comforted by the fact that Matthew and Majora's house is in perfect order. Now stop the bickering and put Labor House in order. 3. Reciprocity A few of the new Scarret party pawns alluded to the speculation that I received an abundance of favors from the government consequently I gave nothing in return. It's therefore incumbent on me to debunk those lies perpetrated by the NSP operatives. From the inception of the Dominica Labor Party's entry into government, caucus decided for all PARO reps to contribute $100 per month to the DLP's account. I paid in aggregate for five years 2000 to 2005, $6,000. When Roosevelt Scarrett became prime minister, the amount was augmented to $500 monthly. I unhesitatingly contributed this amount from 2005 to 2014, that is nine years. Hence in total for this period, I paid to the DLP's coffers through salary deductions about $54,000. On top of that, post every general election the party left me with a transportation bill averaging $32,000. I contested three elections during this period amortizing loans in aggregate of $96,000 which was supposed to be paid by the political leader. Moreover, during my six years in Cuba, I donated $25,000 dry cash hand delivered to the Prime Minister to deposit on the DLP's account. In 2019 election, the Prime Minister delegated the Wesley constituency in my care without a penny with a stingy candidate. I spent over $5,000 of my personal monies during the campaign. I excluded the period between 1995 and 2000, a grueling period of sacrifice which will remain indelible on my mind. So comrades, the above revelation in a nutshell excluding the valuation of personal constituency contributions should be more than enough evidence to substantiate that I am not a fly-by-night laborer or one who waits outside the gates of government headquarters with a basket to collect goodies from politicians and ministries. I have always been an independent person and thinker, hence the reason why Roosevelt Scarrett abhors me and by extension my family. I need to summarize with the fact that I am one of the few politicians in Dominica's political history who attained a consistent increase in votes for four consecutive terms after winning the Pakes Bouch constituency from the Dominica Freedom Party. Those who have eyes will see and those who have ears will hear.